Hey, no one will be sick. Decentralized, verifiably random lotteries. That's what will be sick. I don't know. Would that be cool? <laughs> okay, well, why? Higher payout, more security, more trust, no managers, automatically runs. Actually, that does sound pretty cool. Yeah, it would be more than just cool. Hmm? So if you haven't seen it yet, Colorado and East Denver have actually joined forces to put on a sick hackathon called Game Jam. Basically what Colorado's looking to do is upgrade the state lottery system with some new tech. So I wanted to take this week and see if I could do something cool myself. I can't actually submit since I'm actually a mentor and I'm helping out, but I still took the time to learn a lot of really cool stuff and build something. I gained a lot of inspiration from these guys from ETH Global and their Candy Shop project. But yeah, so something that's really awesome that you can do with blockchain technology that you can't do with Web2 or any traditional things is have it decentralized and get provably random numbers, which shows true, provably fair winners for your lottery. Decentralized aspect is even more cool because you can spin up a lottery, have it running, and there would never be an issue with someone having to get paid out since the system would actually take care of that and you wouldn't need to trust you know, whatever third party is actually running the lottery. This is something that hasn't been possible until now let's jump into some code the first thing that you need to know is that we're working with interfaces here interfaces basically allow us to interact with contracts that are not our contract so this is basically the file set up here we have our governance file this is kind of like the interesting one that that ties everything together the governance bit makes it so that our lottery smart contract can interact with our randomness smart contract and our randomness smart contract can interact with our lottery smart contract there are two main interesting bits that actually happen so the first one we have our start new lottery contract what it does is it changes the lottery to be in an open state we make a chain link request to our chain link alarm which sets a timer basically and it's going to call back this fulfill alarm which is actually going to call our pick winner function um are you using a single centralized oracle yes calling the chain link alarm for one node is technically centralized and you would not want to have a single chain link alarm in a production system but we're just testing we're developing so it's fine same thing with the vrf actually we're going to get a verifiably random number from one node we don't want to do that in a production system because we're relying on one node and <laughs> And if you build a centralized application on a decentralized blockchain, you're literally just building a regular application in a harder environment. So those are the interesting bits that happen. Fulfill alarm, and then we call this pick lot or, or pick winner function. Now pick winner is actually going to interact with our randomness contract, which is where we have all the, the verifiably random stuff. So we actually, we're saying, hey, go to this smart contract. We go to our randomness smart contract. This is all, this is literally like a basic basic VRF get random number smart contract, which is great because a basic is good. And what we do is we get the random number, and then we're going to return this fulfill randomness function. So so this function get random is going to make a request to a chain link node to get the random number, and it's going to return it on this fulfill randomness bit, and it's gonna give it back to our lottery contract with this line right here, lottery interface at the address of our governance.lottery uh, fulfill randomness. So, and in the lottery, it's gonna call this fulfill random, which this is where it does the payouts. We say, okay, great, grab, grab take that random number, mod it by the players dot length, then transfer the balance of this whole thing to the winner, and, and that's really it. It's, it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. So all you gotta do is compile this, Make sure on Robston, deploy it here, confirm that. Once it's deployed, grab the address, compile lottery, deploy the lottery, compile the randomness, deploy the randomness, copy the randomness address, send it some Robston link, copy the lottery address, send it some Robston link, copy the lottery, and copy the randomness, and put them both into the governance contract and hit initiate. And now we're all set up to start the lottery. Doing all your development and remix? Yeah, yeah, what's wrong with remix? You're not even using Truffle or Builder? I don't I don't really know no JS that well.
Look, at the end of the day, if that's what you want to use, that's what you want to use, and I think that's fantastic. But there's some more sophisticated tools to make the development life cycle a lot easier. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I mean, not, I, mean <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. So Truffle makes that whole process a lot easier for a number of reasons, and yeah, I kind of had to learn a little bit of Node.js to do this. Truffle offers two huge benefits. You can write tests. You can also write migrations, which basically help you deploy stuff. You can just run Truffle Migrate Network Live, and this will post right to Robson, but uh, it'll only post what you want it to, and it'll post an order. So since I've already deployed these contracts to chain, um, and it knows that I haven't made any updates, it says, hey, you know, you haven't made any updates, you don't need to make anything different. If I want to force uh, it to update, I can do dash dash reset, and it will start compiling the contracts, and then start to migrate or deploy all these to Robson, which is really nice. So, mm, get Node.js, but because Remix is a little bit easier to see, we're gonna do it on Remix. So to start off, there's no players, the pot size is zero, that's the governance contract, the lottery state is one, which if we go to this enum here, zero is open, one is closed, it starts off closed, which makes a whole lot of sense, the lottery ID is going to be one, because we just started, this is the minimum amount you have to pay, it's also the maximum amount that you can pay, and we want to start a lottery. So we're going to start a new lottery, and put in the duration in seconds, so we want the lottery to be five minutes long. If I hit this, I start the lottery. Then we only have five minutes to win and enter a whole bunch of times so we can win this lottery. Let's go. If I hit this, uh, now we can look at our lottery contract, which is it this one. That's this one. We see the transaction come in. And if we come here, we can just kind of like wait for this transaction to complete and the lottery state will get updated. Okay. It's open now. Now I can enter the lottery. Oh my god, I have to enter a whole bunch of times so I can win the lottery. Let's grab the value. We're going to place it in here. Enter. We gotta beat out everybody else. We gotta enter again. Let's enter again. Let's let's enter the lottery. Uh, five minutes to enter. We're gonna enter again. Cute, 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 cute. Uh, they're all pending. <laughs> I'm gonna win this lottery. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Who else is in this lottery? Okay, okay. That's me. Okay, that's good. I think I think this other player is. I think that's me. Okay. Wait, what's the pot now? Oh my god, this lottery is like four dollars now. <gasps> it's closed. Oh, it's not closed. It's calculating the winner now. It did it. It did it automatically. The chain link alarm works. It's fantastic. This was the alarm that kicked off. This was the VRF. Okay, so the randomness number is the randomness one. The randomness number got posted. So that means if we go back here, if we go back here, get this shit empty. And then, did I win? Did I win? And I won. I won. I won the lottery. Yes, I won the decentralized lottery. Woo! So you can actually do all that in Truffle. And it's better to do your development process in Truffle because you can iterate a lot faster. I like showing in Remix because it's a little bit easier to visualize and easier to see. So that's the code for a decentralized, verifiably random lottery. It's, it's kind of just the basic frame, uh, the basic framework. There are a couple improvements to make, like adding more chain link nodes to both the VRF and the alarm clock process to make it truly decentralized. I did it from a centralized point of view because, you know, I was developing. The other bit is, is adding a front end. As much as I like to think that I am great at, at front ends, you know, here's what I have. And just kidding, that's that's actually a project that I did before. Here's what I really had. And the other thing is Game Jam Hackathon is actually still going on right now. So if you're watching this video and it's Friday morning or Game Jam hasn't closed, you actually have time. Rip out a sick front end, slap it onto this code, and submit it to Game Jam. So if you thought this was helpful, if you're going to use the code, if you're going to play with Truffle, if you're going to spin up your own smart contracts right now, hit that like button, hit subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you check out Game Jam. I'll see you there, guys.